so now we are finally getting started with the part three of the Silent King, and that is the the top section of the dais. So that's pretty much what this is, and this will actually sit behind uh, the Silent King. And then you can also see there's a couple of uh, small pulpits here where his uh, his little side dudes are gonna sit. And then in this part, there is an enslaved uh, Catan shard that is also part of the dais, and that's eventually going to go right in the... Sorry, this thing's really tall. Right in the middle, like so. And, well, I left it off for now, just so that it's easier to paint. Uh, let's see, so let me set this piece aside first, because I like doing the hardest thing first. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, the glowing effects in this model, or this part of the model, which even more than the first part, there, there's a lot of different sections. So to start off with, we're going to go ahead and hit everything with, uh, what's the color called again? Dragon white. Or just flat white or any type of white. And this is going to be the underlying color for when I eventually add in my green glow. Uh, so there's a lot, so let's go ahead and get into that now. see already this model's a lot there's a lot of shit going on here and I haven't even gotten to this part yet so uh, but we are gonna I just wanted to let the video take a little bit of a break all right let us put this thing off to the side and we're gonna give the same treatment to the enslaved star god
Alright guys, you know what's next on this guy. Uh, I went ahead and, well the, yeah, we just did the, uh, all the white stuff all over and I went ahead and did a second coat of everything off camera just because, you know, again, viewer fatigue and you guys didn't want to see me, you know, double coating anything like that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to fill in all of these white spaces all over with our handy dandy hex wraith flame that's going to give us the green glowing effect uh... there's a lot as you guys have already seen with uh... just this in particular so uh... i'm not going to waste your time i'm just going to go ahead and get right into it Alrighty, check that out, we got lots of green, green, green everywhere. Good color for Halloween too. So we got our, yeah, plenty of green all over the dais here. And of course we have our enslaved star god. It's uh, not a happy camper there, but he is, ooh, he's green. And that's what we want. So, as always, we're going to let that dry and we're going to come back to it. Alright, so we've got all the green glow effects done on this thing. And then off camera, I also went ahead and went back in and cleaned up a bunch of the edges with black, especially like on these uh, uh, little short obelisk looking things. Uh, so what we're going to do now is move on to all the uh, the mechanical mechanisms that, I don't know why I said that, but as with before, that is going to be done using our rough iron and so where that's going to be applied to is mainly just kind of like all along these pipes and ribbing and then uh, some of the inset stuff around these orbs this thing in the back here and these little grabbers down here so uh, without further ado I'm just going to go ahead and get into it
Are you listening to this show and thinking, man, I'd like to start a podcast, but I don't even know where to start? Well, Buzzsprout has the answers for you. Buzzsprout is a podcast hosting service that provides a number of valuable resources to help you on your podcasting career path. For one, Buzzsprout offers indefinite hosting of all your episodes and allows you to host as much material as you want, depending on the type of subscription that you opt for. Buzzsprout also provides a means for getting your show hosted to every major podcasting platforms such as iTunes, Pandora, Spotify, you name it. In addition, Buzzsprout also provides various means to get your show monetized through various sponsorship and affiliate programs, links to other paid hosting platforms such as Patreon and YouTube, and your own personal newsroom to learn all the tips and tricks for optimizing your podcast for the greatest return on your investment. If you're hearing all this and you're still interested, you can go to my link below and receive an, and receive an Amazon gift card for starting a podcast hosting subscription that you'll receive on the second billing period of your podcast journey. Everyone has something to share and there's no time left to present. Join Buzzsprout today. All right, so now uh, the next step we're on is to continue with some of the uh, the mechanical parts. Uh, as you can see, I actually ended up doing a lot of the base color off camera. Actually, you can't even really see it that well, but like mainly on these uh, these giant energy pipes, I went ahead and filled in, and uh, that's pretty much all I did off camera. Yeah, also uh, the ones in the back here have the uh, the brass color, or actually what, rough iron color. That's what I was using. So now what we're going to do, uh, not so much on these parts, well, maybe a little bit, but what we're going to do now, especially with the bigger parts like this uh, this engine dealy in, in the middle here, if you can see it, and then also the speaker looking things, is we're going to dry brush the edges of those, with our true copper, it's a bit of a lighter color, so that'll make the edges stand out, especially uh, down here on these tentacles. So, <clears throat> get this nice and shook up, and without further ado, we shall. Okay, that might be a little too light. So the thing about these army painter pants is the uh, the mix the medium agent always seems to unmix. Let's try that again. There we go. It's a nice thick helping. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So that actually took a lot less time than I thought it would, which is a good thing. So I think what I now want to do is move on to uh, the next thing that's still kind of intensive on this guy, and that is going to be to take care of, let's see, where, where, where's that color? No, oh, here we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to tackle these little uh, obelisk things on top. And to do that, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the uh, the men here. And we're going to hit that with our uh, dark net turbo dark paint. And that's the, uh, this is the color shifting stuff. And this is the one that goes from between like a dark green to like a black color. And is also metallic. And fortunately, this time I uh, made the note to actually try and clean up the edges around this thing because this stuff is a little too see through to do that with. You gotta shake these up good. And that's, you're hearing the, uh, the ball bearing that they put inside these things. But, so, this is gonna take a couple coats, so let's go ahead and get to it.
Alright, uh, that was a pain in the ass, but we got it done. Yeah, these, uh, these Turbo Dark paints are kind of hard to use because they're very liquidy and they go on pretty wet, so the real challenge is not, uh, not letting it seep into, you know, the green work that I've already done in here, but... So that's pretty much what that's going to look like, and, well, I am going to add some more color into it a little bit later, but for now, we're just going to let that dry. Alright, we are just about done with this thing. There's really only a couple steps left. Steps. Steps left. Uh, the first one is we're going to dry brush these obelisk bits. The uh, power rocks up there. And we're going to use our poison cloud green. It's a very bright green and that'll bring out the edges on this. Much like we did with the, uh, the men ears in the first part. And then, as we did before... We are going to go over all the rest of the black stuff here with electric blue. And that's going to give us our nice uh, blue tinge to all of the uh, the black surfaces. Which also, uh, off camera I went ahead and did a little bit more cleanup with uh, the black. And then, at the very end, uh, let's see, where is it? We are going to, here we go. Uh, on these little pulpits, you'll see that there's this uh, uh, necrontier symbol right in the middle. And in there, we're going to use our radium paint that I normally do for, uh, 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 whatchamacallit, like the fancier, like like the, the like I've been doing with the, uh, the shoulder pads and stuff like that with these necrons. I can't remember the word, but it's what we're going to use. So, first of all, I'm just going to go ahead and... Actually, you know what? First thing, I'm going to do this first. Actually, just because that takes a bit longer to dry, and then I can use that time drying to paint other stuff. So, let's get a bit of this radium color out. A little bit more than I would have liked, but no matter. You know what? Let me wash this brush off a little bit too. Okay. And again, I do have to deal with this going on. Kind of thick and wet, so it's going to take a few more more than a more than one coat to do it right so I'll just get a little bit in there and try and keep it from uh pooling up too much You can already see it is going to take another coat because that didn't really even go on that thick at all. There's definitely still a lot of the uh, the base color underneath showing through. So while we let that dry for a second, let's go ahead and start with our poison cloud. And again, that's going to go over just these... Uh, those sections. So we just need a little bit. And the dry brush. And I just lightly go over all the edges. And this one I do have to do I do have to be a little bit more forceful because it this color kind of sinks into the uh, 
it, it, it somewhat blends in with the, uh, the dark net color for whatever reason, but it's no, it is no big deal. So we're just gonna get a little bit of this on, especially along the top here. Because that's the part that's going to be most shown, or most visible, I should say. And then, let's see, get some of these edges in the middle section. Maybe. And the bottom. Now I just need a little bit more to do the other side. In the same manner. Okay, that might not be enough, but we'll see. So let's just go ahead and get these edges. Almost done. Doesn't have to be a whole hell of a lot. I just need enough to make an effect on the primary edges of these obelisks type things. Let's do the bottom again real quick. And the middle. There we go, just a little bit. So now, what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and get that second coat of the uh, radium paint in these uh, little insignias and then we'll go ahead and start with dry brushing the blue.
right, so that is that's it. We finished the upper portion of our Silent King's Dais. So all that's left to do is to get the constituent parts together. So let's bust out our glue. And the first thing is our enslaved Catan shard is going to be going right at the end of this boom in the middle of the upper part. So he's going to go right there. Kind of, okay, I can't. Camera's a little too low, but. All right, so once I get this glued on, I'll turn it around and sort of show you guys. So that is how our enslaved star god goes on to the upper portion of the dais here. And now, let's go ahead and bring back the lower section. And this is going to get too big for the camera, probably. But what we're going to do is uh, these prongs here, kind of. Here, let me see if I can see. Right here, in between the uh, the two side pulpits here, are going to go right here behind the main platform. So again, okay, uh, so I'll just glue here. Just apply a little bit of super glue there which I am using Gorilla Glue gel, super glue. And we just gotta make sure that our parts line up. This is also a bit of a pain in the ass, but I think I got it, yes. And that is our dais. Just a big old guy. See if I can angle it up a little bit for you there. Yeah, it's definitely oversized. You can tell why this is uh, counts as a Lord of War unit. And then together with our Triarchal Meniers, those guys float out in front. And so what's going to be left is our fourth and final part where we actually do up the uh, the guys that sit inside this thing or on top of this thing. So we'll give you a nice uh, little beauty shot there. Oh, yeah. So, as, oh, that's too high. There we go. So, as always, you know, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you like this video, go ahead and like, subscribe, leave a comment, whatever you want to do. And, you know, go back, watch some of my previous videos, stay subscribed, check out some of my more upcoming videos, of course. And, you know, if you like this, also check out some of the other content that I have here on Multimerity Media. I've got uh, two other playlists, including uh, the paint booth here, but I also got Gutsy as Gamer, where I stream uh, Twitch play of you know, me playing video games. And then, of course, I got the uh, the Jankity Ass Podcast, which is my podcast the video version here. The uh, audio version, pretty much wherever you can get podcasts. So, you know, iTunes, Spotify, uh, everything. Except for Pandora. I'm still working on that one. But, and then also check out my Instagram and Facebook pages, oh, which are also Multimerdy Media. It's Multimerdy Media everywhere. And uh, that also has the, uh, the All My Links bio, which is also at the bottom of this uh, uh, episode description here. And like I said, the next video, we're going to go ahead and do up the actual Silent King and his little buddies himself. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.